Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 25, adding and subtracting rational expression, expressions, expressions. So lesson 24 was multiplying and dividing, and now we're going to add and subtract these rational expressions. So exercise one through four, says calculate the following sum, three tenths plus six tenths. Hmm. This one's pretty easy. Since the denominator is the same, all we have to do is combine the numerator with the same denominator. And three plus six is nine tenths. But that's not always that simple because sometimes we don't have same denominators. Look down here. <clears throat> okay, so the other way to approach this is to take three tenths and say three tenths is three times one tenth plus six tenths is six times one tenth. And then I can factor out the three and the six and get three plus six times one tenth. And that would give me nine times one tenth, which then in turns turns into nine tenths. So you're saying, well, why would I do all that work when all I had to do was this? Well, because the next problems aren't going to be that easy because the denominators aren't the same. <clears throat> so here we have 3 over 20. And we have 4 over 15. So in other words, we're going to factor something out. We want the same denominator. So 3 20ths is um, 20 and 15. You ask yourself, self, what does 20 and 15 have in common? And that would be, <clears throat> we're looking for common denominators. So 15 won't go into 20. So if I go over to the side here, and I'm just going to do this one time, and that's it. I'm going to say, well, 20 times 1 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is 60. 20 times 4 is 80. And 20 times 5 is 100. So we're looking for the least common multiple. So then when I do 15, then it would be 15 times one, 15 times two, 15 times three, and 15 times four. Um, and there is my least common multiple. So I know my denominator needs to be 60. So if my denominator is 60, then I ask myself, well, what do I have to multiply 20 by to get 60? And that is three. So if I multiply 3 20 times 3 thirds, that's going to give me 3 times 3, which is 9, over 3 times 20, which is 60. So 3 20 equals 9 60 Okay. And then we're going to say minus, and I'm going to leave a space here for what I'm going to multiply by. And I put my 4 over 15 here, and I know I'm going to need a 60 down here. So I need to ask myself, what do I multiply by to get 60? Well, it was 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be 4 over 4. 4 times 15 is 60. 4 times 4 is 16. So I'm going to take 9 sixtieths minus 16 sixtieths. So then we just say 9 minus 16 is negative 7 over 60. And that is our answer. OK. So now number 3 says 4 fifths. Well, a lot of times, if you can't, four, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 5 is 20. A lot of, usually, the least common multiple is just the multiple of the two numbers that they're given. So 4 times 5 is 20. And that's what we need in this case. So I'm going to write 20 here plus 20 over here. So I say to myself, self, what times 4 is 20? Well, it's 5. Well, what's 5 times pi? 5 pi. So as you can see, I'm doing this now in my head. And you need to advance yourself to this level um, because eventually things are just going to get more complex as you advance in math. And then you start taking timed tests, such as AP exams, ACT, SATs, and that thing. And you need to be able to do these more quickly. 
So five times four is 20, four times square root of two is four square root of two. So there, all this work here, I basically did in my head and here it is here. So now I can add these and I know my denominator is going to be 20 and I can't combine these two terms. So it's five pi plus four root two over 20. All right, number four, denominator of m, 2m, and m. Well, obviously 2m is my least common multiple and I only have one m here, so I need another one. So this has to become 2m plus the 2m in the middle that we already had minus, and this has to be 2m. So I'll put that down there. So there's our denominators. And to get from m to 2m, I had to multiply by two. So I have to multiply the a by two which would give us 2a. The middle term did not change, so it's just b divided by 2m. And then I had to multiply m by 2 to get this 2m, so I multiply c by 2 and I get 2c. So then when I combine these, these are all unlike terms, I'm going to get 2a plus b minus 2c, all divided by 2m. Okay, and since B does not have a two, I can't factor the two out of any of these. This is the answer. We are done. Okay, page two brings us to example one, and it says to perform the indicated operations below and simplify. So we have a four, we have a five. Obviously this common multiple of the denominator, least common multiple is 20. So I'm going to write 20 in the denominators like so. Okay, so I know I multiplied this by five. So I'm gonna just do it up here. So I'm multiplying this by five over five, which is one. And I'm multiplying this one over here by four over four. So that five times four is 20 and five times four is 20. So then I have to multiply this. So I'm going to do it and distribute as I go. So it's going to be five a plus 5b. And then if I distribute this, 4 times 2a is 8a minus 4 times b, which is 4b. And then I combine like terms. This is addition. So 5a plus 8a is 13a. 5b plus a negative 4b is b all over 20. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so here are two denominators of a 3x and a 5x squared. This is getting more complex now. So just for the first time, I'm going to show you what I show in class sometimes. I'll take 3x. Well, that is 3 times x. And then I take 5x squared. That equals 5 times x times x. Okay. So these are the factors. The only thing they have in common is an X. So if I was looking for the greatest common factor and I was factoring these, I would have an X, but that's not what we're doing here. So what do I need? Well, I need another X here and I need a five here and I need a three here. And now I have a three, three, five, five, two X's, two X's, and that would give me 15 X squared, okay? And this would give me 15 X squared. So my least common denominator, or I'm sorry, yeah, least common multiple of the denominator is 15 X squared. So that I'll write 15 X squared here minus 15 X squared. And what I did in blue over here is what I have to multiply these by to get these. So the three X had to get multiplied by five X. So I'm going to put a 5x over 5x here. And this one got multiplied by 3. So over here, I'm going to say times 3 over 3. OK, so 5x times 4 is 20x. And 3 times 3 is 9. So now all I have to do is the denominator is going to be 15x squared. And 20x minus 9 is just 20x minus 9. It's a linear term in the numerator. So there you have it, 20x minus 9 over 15x squared. 
Okay, part C, getting more complex again. So I'm going to go off to the side here and say, well, 2x squared plus 2x equals, I can factor out a 2x and that would be x plus one. And if I factor the denominator, x squared minus 3x minus four, then well, that's going to factor out to be an x here and an x here. Factors of four that add up to three and they're negative, so it's plus or minus. So factors of four, four and one, there it is. Plus one minus four will give me negative three in the middle. So now I have an x plus one here and an x plus one here. I do not have a two x down here. Now I do. So two x matches two x, x plus one matches x plus one. And I need an x minus four here. Now they are equal. So these are the things I have to multiply by to get the common denominator, okay? Hopefully this um, form of doing this is helpful to you. So I'm going to factor these out first. And actually what I can do is put this denominator all together now. So all I'm doing really is multiplying this by 2x. So if I took x squared minus 3x minus 4 and multiply it by 2x and distribute, I get 2x times x squared, which is 2x cubed. 2x times a negative 3, which is a negative 6x squared. And a 2x times a negative 4, which is a negative 8x. Okay, I can do it that way, or I can just leave them as factored forms. So let's just do that first. So I want um, to write just these things here and put them in the same order. So I'm going to put 2x times x plus 1 times x minus 4 on both fractions. So it's going to be 2x, x plus 1 x minus four. So these are my denominators that are common. I had to multiply by x minus four on the top of this one and the bottom actually is what I did. And I multiplied this side by two x over two x. That's how we got these denominators. So now to get the numerators, we just distribute three times x minus four is three x minus 12 and two x times five is 10 x. So my answer is going to be 2x, x plus 1, x minus 4 is my denominator, and 3x plus 10x is 13x, and minus 12 plus 0 is just minus 12. So my answer is 13x minus 12 over 2x times x plus 1 times x minus 4, or I could have just said 13x minus 12 over this, okay? Either way okay, but if you leave it in factored form, that's fine as well. Hmm. Okay, this is page three, exercises five through eight. Since they're exercises, you should pause the video. See if you can do these on your own and then unpause and see how you did. Okay, so here we go. And I'll start with the denominator, of course, and off to the side here, x minus two, uh, there's nothing you can do. X minus two is just simply X minus two. But four X minus eight, when we can factor out of four. And when I do that, I get X minus two. So in order to make the denominators equal, I need to multiply the left side or the X minus two times four. So this is gonna be four over four, okay? <clears throat> and that will give me 20 over four, times x minus two plus three x over four times x minus two. Okay, so I have the same denominator of four and x minus two and 20 plus three x is, I like to put them in uh, standard form, three x plus 20. Okay, so there is number five. All right, number six, m minus three, three minus m. Well, what's the difference between those two? m minus three, 
Okay, this is kind of like in standard form already, so nothing really changes, but three minus M, I want M minus three, but M is negative and here it's positive and three is positive and here it's negative. So if I multiply this by a negative one, it will give me what I have here. So just to, to flip around a binomial when the sign's negative, all you have to do is multiply by negative one. So I'm gonna multiply this by negative one over negative one. And that will give me seven M over M minus three plus, and then negative one times five M is a negative five M over M minus three. Okay, because negative one times three is negative three and negative one times negative M is positive M. So we're going to get a denominator of M minus three. Seven M plus a negative five M is two M. And there you have it. Number seven. All right, so we have a B minus C. So there's nothing we can do with that. So I'll just write it again. And we have a B squared minus two B C plus C squared. So that factors out to be B minus C times B minus C. And if you check that B times B is B squared. B times a negative C is negative B C. Negative C times B is a negative B C. That gives me two negative B C's. And negative times a negative is positive c times c is c squared. So I, this factors to b minus c squared. So I need a b minus c up here to make these two equal. Okay, so the b minus c just simply has to be multiplied by b minus c. That's not very neat, looks like a six and then a scribble. Let me fix that. B minus C, B minus C, okay? So we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by B minus C. So this doesn't change. We're going to have a B squared over, and I've already factored it over here. So let's just write B minus C squared, because B minus C times itself is squared, minus, and then distribute. B times B is B squared and B times a negative C is negative B C over B minus C squared. When I subtract these, I'm going to get a B minus C squared in the denominator and B squared minus B squared is nothing. It's zero, it cancels. And then zero minus a negative B C is positive. BC. So watch your sign. So it's BC over B minus C squared. Okay, number eight. I have an X squared minus one. That's a difference of squares. So off to the side here, X squared minus one equals X plus one times X minus one. And then X squared plus X minus two factors out to be x times x for the first term. And I want factors of negative two that add up to positive one. So they're positive and negative, okay? And I want the bigger one to be positive to get a positive in the middle. So two times one is two. So two times negative one is negative two. Two minus one is one and there it is. So I have an x minus one in common. This does not have an x plus one. And this one does not have an X plus two. So now they all have the three things that in common. So that's what I need to multiply these by. So I don't have a whole lot of room here. So I'll just rewrite everything. So the X squared minus one side, this one has to be multiplied by X plus two. So I'm going to write X over X squared minus one. And how about I actually factor that out while I'm doing this and x squared minus one is x plus one, x minus one. Okay, and I need to multiply that by my x plus two over x plus two. That will take care of my left side. 
the right side needs an x plus one. So I'm going to write two x over my factored form over here, x plus two times x minus one. And I'm lacking the x plus one. So I'm gonna multiply by x plus one over x plus one. Okay, so now I have x plus two, x plus one, x minus one, x plus two, x plus one, x minus one. That will give me x plus two, x plus one, x minus one in the denominator. And this is going to multiply out and give me x squared plus two x and then minus two x times x is two x squared and then 2x times 1 is, so be careful here, it's a negative 2x times x, which is negative 2x squared. Think of it as a negative 2x times a positive 1. That's going to be minus 2x. Okay, x squared, now I just finish, and my denominator will not change, x plus 2 x plus one, and the order of these doesn't really matter. It kind of bothers me that the x minus one's not first, and the x plus one, then the x plus two. I like going up from left to right, but I'll be okay. <laughs> um, so now we're going to simplify this. x squared minus two x squared is a negative x squared. Two x minus two x goes away, and there's our answer. Okay, page four brings us to example two. Okay, a compound fraction, fraction within a fraction. Okay, so actually there's two fractions within one fraction. So this looks really complex at first. Okay, so I'm going to separate these and color code them. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as a division problem with, without this fraction bar here. So it's going to be b squared plus b minus one divided by 2b minus one, all minus one, okay? That's all one piece, that's the numerator, divided by, so I'm going to break the fraction up and write it this way. And that's gonna give me four minus eight over b plus one, okay? All right, so that's the first step. The next thing I'm going to do is write this out with common denominators. So this is going to be, I need a 2b minus one minus something over 2b minus one. So let me show that. We have something minus something, we have fractions. Now when we're subtracting or adding fractions, the denominators have to be the same. So this is 2b minus one, therefore this has to be 2b minus one. So the numerator has to be also 2b minus one over here because anything divided by itself is one. So then this b squared plus b minus one comes down. Okay, so that's the next step. And we do the same over on the right. So we have this fraction bar here replaced by the, or the division symbol. So then we take the four and think of it as four over one. And we're going to multiply it by some fraction to get B plus one in the denominator. Okay, so this is a minus sign here. Okay, so I need a B plus one in the denominator. So this has to be B plus one. And so if we're gonna multiply by one, something times something divided by itself is one. So this is what we're going to have to do to get this side, okay? All right, so when I distribute, let me use green, I'm going to distribute these. Okay, I'm just trying to be really careful, show all my work. Um, so I'm just going to simplify this side b squared minus no b term is going to give me a b squared. b minus 2b is a minus b. 
negative one minus a negative one is plus one. Negative one plus one is zero. That cancels, this constant cancels, and we're left with b squared minus b over 2b minus one. So our numerator just simplified even further, and that's getting much easier to deal with. And now I'm going to distribute here and get four times b, which is four b, and four times one, which is four, divided by b plus one. Okay, and that's going to be minus eight over b plus one. Okay, and close that all up. And so that's that divided by that. So now I'm going to factor this b squared minus b, and that's going to give me b times b minus one over two b minus one. So I have simplified the numerator, the original numerator, as far as I possibly can right now. And now that's going to be divided by, and now I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to get b plus one in the denominator. And four b minus no b term is four b. Four minus eight is negative four, okay? Now I'm going to switch this division symbol here to multiplication. So now we're going to get b times b minus one over two b minus one. And I'm gonna change this to times and I'm gonna take the reciprocal of this, but I'm also going to factor out a four and take a four away from four b, it leaves b and minus four divided by four is one. So as you can see, I have a B minus one and a B minus one here. Anything divided by itself is one. So that will leave me with B times B plus one. And I don't wanna multiply that, we're trying to simplify. So my final answer is going to be B minus one, B minus one is one. B times B plus one would give me just that, B times B plus one divided by four, times 2b minus 1. Okay, and that is equivalent to this in simplest form. Okay, page 5 brings us to the end of lesson 25. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.